This is the new Tesla Model S Plaid, and it's a little bit like the Millennium Falcon because it might not look all that special, but it's quick enough to do the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. Now I'm going to show you exactly why, because later on in this video, I'm going to launch it to see how quick this car is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. I'm also going to talk you around the exterior. The interior, I'm going to see how practical it is, try out some of its tech, and of course, take it for a drive. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design. So even though this is an all new car, it looks rather similar to the old Model S. However, you can now get this plaid version, which has this horrible badge. It also gets a bootlet spoiler, which is less horrible. I like that. In fact, I like the overall design of the rear. What was chrome on the previous car is now black though, because black is definitely cooler than chrome, apparently. Wheel sizes start at 19 inches, which is too small. Though you can pay extra, 4,400 pounds actually, to upgrade to 21s, which look a lot better. As with the previous Model S, you get flush door handles, which pop out and you have black surround for the windows unlike the chrome on the previous generation car this little pod here is where your side view cameras are kept quite a lot of look at that actually serves a purpose and looks quite nice here at the front the design is just slightly cooler than the previous generation model s it's very sleek very minimalistic you do have a little grill there to help cool the battery and motors and the headlights are really sleek there's no matrix leds it looks smart in fact overall the design of this car is pretty sleek at the look of it starting price of the new tesla model s is from £96,000, so it's pretty expensive. Now, if you're thinking about buying a new car such as this, or any car for that matter, you're probably going to need to sell your old car, and you can now sell it through CarWow. All you have to do is upload some photos, put a brief description about your car, and our dealers will bid on your car, and that's a great way to ensure you're getting a fair price for your car, and they'll even come to your house, take it away, and just put the money straight into your bank account. It's dead easy. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll follow the link in the description below, you can go to CarWow to sell your car. Alternatively, you can do it at a later date simply by Googling, help me CarWow. And of course, you can buy your next car through CarWow as well. Here on the inside of the new Tesla Model S, there are two major things to talk about. The first, of course, is this yoke-style steering wheel. It's the only steering wheel you can get with the car in the UK, apparently, which could be a bit annoying. Now, I'm going to tell you what it's like when you're actually driving later on. To look at, it's pretty cool, and it gives you a great view of the instruments. There are no actual physical buttons. Instead, you've got touch-sensitive ones, though they are rather easy to just brush, so you can accidentally find yourself just touching the indicator when you don't actually mean to. The next thing to talk about is the screen. It's no longer portrait, it is now landscape, which I prefer. And the processor that runs the infotainment system is as powerful as that in a PlayStation 5. It is super responsive, but it needs to be because you control absolutely everything through it, including most of the car's functions. So if you want to move the steering wheel, you have to go into here, then you control it using these buttons. Same with the door mirrors as well. You have to press that there and then you control them with the buttons on the steering wheel, which is a bit of a faff. You soon get used to it and I am thankful that unlike in the Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, you don't have the speedo though. It's actually on the main instruments here because you do have proper instruments in front of you, which is good. I tell you what also is good, quality in here. It's better than the previous generation car. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Well, it shouldn't do at this price. It's a very expensive car, isn't it? Seats are lovely, very supportive. And I really like the design as well. There is that's not ideal about this car though and while it does feel nice build quality maybe is a bit iffy in places for instance the owner of this car pointed this out this cover for the cup holders doesn't stay open he needs to get that fixed but apparently his tesla retailer doesn't know how to fix it yet how annoying these other slidey bits do work as they should do though lots of storage down here let me just shut them back up and obviously that one itself more storage in here then you've got your wireless charging pads there for your mobile phone quite an annoying place for your hazard warning lights something you might need to hit quite quickly but it's a bit fiddly to get to i will show you in the glove box but look at this when i try and open the glove box which once again you have to do through the screen it's asking me for a pin because the owner has locked it I wonder what he's got stashed in there. What I can show you is the fact that now the Tesla Model S finally gets some door bins. So look, you can fit a big bottle in there, which is great. Overall, though, I like the interior design. It's really nice. Let's just get rid of that. Here in the back of the Model S, knee room is good. Hey, room is all right. People over six foot will be fine. And I love the fact that you get this massive glass roof. What's not so good though is this. Look, you can't really stretch your feet out underneath the chair in front because it's mounted quite low. Also, there's not much distance between the floor and this seat. So look, you don't end up with much under thigh support. So that could be annoying on a longer journey. If you need to carry three in the back at once, it's actually quite decent because this is quite a wide bench seat and the flat floor means there's plenty of room for everyone's feet. If you need to carry 
children look you've got baby seat anchor points there and if there's no one sat in the middle you can of course fold this down it's a big armrest you've got cup holders lift this up you can see look we've got two wireless charging pads there and a little extra storage space there annoyingly though there's no through loading i do like this you've got this screen here for the climate control so you can move the airflow about it's using your finger you've got heated seats you can control the music and you've even got youtube netflix or whatever there's also a couple of extra usb c's there for charging some more mobile devices and like in the front you get door bins here in the back as well so that's good oh look at this little coat hook there Tiny things, please, tiny minds. Now, it's good in the back of this. However, if you want an EV with even more room in the rear seats, click on the pop-out banner up there. I'll follow my link in the description below to watch my review of a big, spacious, and luxurious electric vehicle. Now let's talk about storage. Obviously, being a Tesla, you have a front boot, a fruit, and it's a decent size. And look, we've got the bag for the Tesla cable here. Look at that. Willow Springs world record lap by Randy Pobst. He did a 127.78. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't do that around a certain unnamed German circuit, which is very famous, because then this would be happening to me. Uh -huh. Is the question the old? Here at the rear boot, also known as the root, you have loads more space, 793 litres. I mean, look, you've been loaded there. And of course, there's some more storage underneath this false floor. There's a little storage box under here as well. There's a nitty area there. And if you want to fold down the rear seats for even more space, you just press this button here. And oh, I thought they'd go down. Oh, that's frustrating, isn't it? They're electrically released, but they don't go down by themselves. Also, ah, ah, ah. Let me show you this. Look, you get a continuous flat low floor, which is good, but I don't know where I'm going to put this now because it won't fit underneath the false floor. No, no, it won't. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Tesla Model S. If you've got the key in your pocket, the car can sense it, and when you walk up to it, it'll automatically unlock. And then when you walk away again, when you're finished with the car, it will get and lock itself. The trouble is, when you're just walking around the car, sometimes it'll just like keep on start opening. But there we go, see? And then when you walk away, it will lock and then you walk up to it again and then it will open and oh, it just drives you crazy. It's completely nuts. <laughs> the location of the horn, which is this touch sensitive button there, is quite hard to hit if you suddenly need to activate the horn. You'd be like, what? no, no, no. Oh. Finally, I've heard from an owner that on some cars, like this one, the seals just here where the windows join can be slightly indented. As a result, the wind gets in there and you get a bit of wind whistle as you're driving along. More on that later. I hope you like this car in white because that's the only colour you get for free. Everything else you have to pay for. In fact, I had to pay £2,500 to get this car in a different colour. To find out what the colour is, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Tesla's got rid of the normal store gear selector, which I do like, and they've now just allowed you to select gears by moving that forwards or backwards here, which is a bit fiddly. Alternatively, you can press buttons down here. Come on, there we go, look, reverse, neutral, drive, park. I prefer the stalk. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Check this out, right? Look. <laughs> The computer that runs the infotainment system is so good you can actually play arcade games on it. There is nothing like this in any other car I've driven. The standard fit adaptive air suspension will automatically lower the car's ride height when you're going quicker for improved aerodynamics to get the most out of your remaining range. The Tesla uses noise cancelling technology through its stereo system to cancel out any unwanted noises to make the car as quiet as possible. Oh, excuse me, I'm just busy dancing because this Tesla Model S has a boombox feature which plays music from the car stereo through a speaker here at the front, which is normally used for pedestrian protection, but Elon, yeah, he likes us to have some fun. Say, so sort of nice, well, have a good night. This car's sleek bodywork isn't just to make it look sexy, oh no, it also reduces the drag. In fact, the drag coefficient is just 0.208, which makes it the second most aerodynamic production car after Mercedes EQS, which has a drag coefficient of just 0.2. This plaid version has one electric motor on the front and two on the rear axle. As a result, it has 1,020 horsepower and 1,400 newton meters of torque. Very heavy though, weighs in at 2,160 kilos. How does that affect the performance? Well, we'll find out a bit later on when I launch it. 
Okay, let's see what this Tesla Model S Plaid is like to drive, starting with driving it around town in residential areas. So being an electric car, it's very easy to do. There's no gears to mess about with. You've got one pedal driving, so when you lift off the accelerator, the car will slow down as it recoups lost energy and puts it back into the battery. And it does give you a good amount of control right up to stop signs. Look, I can come to a stop. Oh, there we go. Then just wait here. Let's go left. Ah, <laughs> that's where the yoke's a problem. When you're doing those turns at low speed, you do notice that you want to grab onto the top of the wheel to just rotate it round. And having the yoke is not perfect, is it? I think it's going to take some getting used to for a lot of people. So a corner like that is okay, but when you start to need to cross your arms over, it becomes an issue. And you definitely can't shuffle the wheel like they'd like you to on the British driving test. Look, I'll show you now. Can you do it? Shuffling the wheel. I'm not, I can't shuffle, I can't, I can't, I can't shuffle the wheel. No, that's not very good, is it? So when you do manoeuvres and like U-turning and doing all that kind of stuff, it's all a bit of a faff. Uh, <laughs> can you see what I mean? These are things that seem like a good idea when you're designing the car maybe, but in reality, they're not perfect. One of the good things though, is that the turning circle is relatively tight. Oh, he's doing it again. Relatively tight at 11.2 meters. However, there is another big luxury electric car which has an even tighter turning circle and a proper steering wheel. If you want to see what it is, click on the pop-out button up there. I'll follow my link in the description below to check out my review of that car. It's one of my favorites. So then let's find out what this Tesla Model S Plaid is like to drive on the motorway. First thing I'm going to do is press this button on the steering wheel twice to engage the autopilot. So this car has the standard autopilot, which means that it can brake and accelerate to keep you a safe distance from the car in front and steer to keep you in lane. And it's a pretty decent system. Hooks you up nicely and just does the job for you. You do have to keep hold of the wheel, otherwise it will disengage. But yeah, that's, that's how it should be really, isn't it? Now, this is the kind of system you normally have to pay extra for on this car's German rivals, but you get it standard here. And you can upgrade this system so they'll do things like follow your sat nav and even take you off up a motorway ramp. This one doesn't have it though, so I'm just doing the normal cruise control thing. And it just makes life easy. It allows me to just focus on what this Tesla Model S Plaid is like for just cruising on the motorway. And the seats, they're comfy. The suspension is good over undulations and the, the actual expansion joints in this rather poorly surfaced motorway here in Los Angeles. There's not too much tire noise Noise, considering the surface is quite bad. Occasionally when you go over bumps, you hear the suspension go dunk, 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 dunk. Now that was the cruise control just disengaging then because I've applied a little bit too much pressure. And you do have to get used to it. This car is also quite in terms of wind noise, generally speaking. Apart from this one, because it's got a problem with its window seal there. So when you go a little bit quicker, you start to get quite a bit of wind whistle, which is a shame because it is a quiet car, this. Well, oh, it didn't like that. Oh, it's not liking that at all because I'm just weaving across the lanes without doing the indication. There, it'll let me cross the line now, all fine, calm down Tesla, we're all okay. Other than that though, relaxing, relaxing, relaxing to travel in. I'll tell you what else is relaxing about this car. The ability to just overtake whoever you want, whenever you want. So, see that Honda there? I'm gonna overtake it now, like that. You ready? Three, two, one, floor it. Past him. <laughs> I mean, that is nuts. You have to get on the brakes pretty quickly because you're soon going over the speed limit and I don't want to end up in an American jail. That'd be bad. Now let's see what this Model S Plaid is like on a twisty road. And I have a perfect twisty road here, a Californian Canyon twisty road. So I'm going to put the suspension into sports mode. So I've got to look down here. Oh, it's not ideal. Okay, that menu, then suspension. Come on. <sighs> really having to take my eyes off the road here. Right, suspension is now set up in sport, so it's stiffer. First thing to note is that, yes, you do notice that increase in the stiffness of the suspension and it stops the car leaning quite so much in the bends you do feel the bumps more that's the trade-off obviously but if you're on a twisty mm -hmm. cash whoa <laughs> that was a noisy bit of jdm action yeah this thing is way faster and completely silent so this is a heavy vehicle mainly due to all those batteries but because they're mounted low down in the car you've got a low center of gravity so it doesn't actually lean that much in the bends in fact, it stays pretty blooming flat. You'd have to watch going into the turns though because the brakes, while they're absolutely fine in town and fine on the motorway, I just think the stopping performance isn't quite as on it as say in a Porsche Taycan Turbo S. But do you know what? This handles really well. 
<laughs> when you think this, this is more of a like luxury saloon than a sports car, it really goes around corners very, very impressively. And of course, you've got incredible grip because you've got four wheel drive and loads of power out of the bends oh, from those three electric motors. And out here, when you're going quicker and you're on a twisty road, this yoke steering wheel actually works, you know, I quite like it because you're not having to do such tight turns as you would do in town and because you're going quicker it just feels quite natural for those who like to hold the wheel slightly more towards like 10 to 2 than quarter to 3 you ain't going to enjoy it but you know that's quite a tight hairpin there and I'm not missing the lack of top to the steering wheel I might do if I said I needed to do some oversteer action to correct a slide but this car isn't really going to be doing much sliding I don't think it's doing lots of beeping as I accidentally go over the central line <laughs> the way this thing hauls ass up a hill is just unreal all right do you know what I'm going to do now right I'm going to slow down let's slow down this car goes around corners as well as you ever need it to yeah it's no sports car but it's one hell of a fast sporty saloon car let's set up for drag strip mode and um, this is just going to condition the battery and look I've got to wait five minutes so yeah bear with me while the battery conditions so that I can launch it and I'll, I'll catch you in a moment and we'll see how quick this thing is this Tesla Model S Plaid is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 1.99 seconds but can it really I'm gonna find out I've got it in drag strip mode I've got my specialist timing gear up here I'm gonna launch it I'm gonna find out how quick it really is launch now what? Freaking frick. It was quick. My God. 2.49 seconds. Not the 1.99 seconds Tesla claim, but they do have this thing called rollout where they actually don't measure the time for the first foot of moving. And that gets them a slightly better time. 2.49 is impressive. Let's try it again. <laughs> Locked and loaded. Let's do this. What did we get there? 2.4 seconds oh it's well quick maybe i'd have got a slightly better time from the plaid had i launched it with a full battery however when i collected the car it had 60 percent remaining and due to filming constraints i didn't have time to charge it so then what's my final verdict on the tesla model s plaid should you avoid it should you consider it should you shut it does my head in <laughs> should what was that all about? You're not helping your case here, right? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I'm not so sure what I should do now. I was going to say you should go right ahead and buy it because I have gone right ahead and bought one of these. I've got one on order, just waiting for it to arrive. But hopefully it won't have these gremlins. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, let me know some other videos you'd like to see in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and click on that box there if you want help selling your car through CarWow.